Co-creation involves thinking not only of ourselves as creators, but as collaborators with other participants, human and non-human. Doing so, we acknowledge with humility that as we're being creative, we are leaning heavily on all of the influences that are around us, and we work cooperatively with them to be more creative. Being co-creative is perhaps the latest step in a history of acknowledging how we don't simply use tools, but we work with them. An important part of the history of exploring human tool use is the work of French anthropologist Claude Levi-Strauss. He investigated different cultures to conclude that human characteristics are similar everywhere. In regard to tool use, he coined the term bricolage, which describes the practice of employing many skills to put pre-existing things together in a new way, which includes adapting projects to available materials and tools. Bricolage sounds much like the improvisational process used by creative technologists, or the DIY approach of the maker movement. Co-creation goes beyond accepting the qualities of available materials, but acknowledges the material's potential to influence the outcome. Co-creative systems pair people and machines together to be more creative than either can be alone. Co-creation short for cooperative creation, is typically described as coordination between people and technologies. But in some of the writings, this concept will be taken further than that. We can think about co-creation occurring between culture, technology and nature. The focus is then on finding ways to work cooperatively with these forces in our creative activities. With co-creation applied to systems beyond machines and tools, it can be seen as present in our relationships with natural materials and cultural networks. The question that arises is, what are the affordances of these relationships? How can we be most creative by understanding or refining the tools and technologies that we're using, or by being aware of the natural and built environment we find ourselves in, or by acknowledging the cultural context in which we're operating. A nice example of how these things come together in co-creative design is the development of Velcro. Velcro is used on clothes, shoes and other things as a fastener. Velcro is a technology, but it was inspired by a natural phenomenon. It was invented in the 1940s by Swiss engineer George de Mestrel who had the idea after walking in the woods where burrs would be, get attached to his jumper. When he looked into how they could be so sticky, he discovered how nature had worked out a process of making sure that seed pollens could stick to things and get carried all over the place. He then used the same kinds of mechanisms in an industrial version. This imitative process, called biomimicry, is a powerful way of drawing on the creativity of nature and by working with and being inspired by these design solutions we're likely to increase our own creative solutions. Co-creation with nature has long existed. An example is the root bridges of Megalia which are coaxed from the natural albeit slow growth of rubber trees. Humans have co-created or worked with natural systems for ages to develop methods of mutual exploitation. Environmental issues have generally risen when this mutuality turns to exploitation. Natural inspiration for art and design practices has existed in forms such as paintings that poetically mimic landscapes or engineered aqueducts that mimic river systems. A particularly unusual artistic collaboration with nature is the imaginative paintings of Giuseppe Accomabolo in the 16th century, who painted portrait heads made entirely of, of objects such as fruits, vegetables and flowers. Of these creative relationships with nature, John Dewey is summarised as concluding, 
new powers and aspects of nature are revealed by act our activities which explore, discover and determine possibilities of the world and the human situation. In the digital age, these similar tendencies have arisen as co-creative practices in bioart and biodesign, where natural processes and forms are integrated with human aesthetic judgments. Bioart might include extensions to the body, the relationship of living to non-living organisms, living textiles, the future of cyborg systems, human-machine interactions, and a great deal more. In these practices, biology not only inspires creativity, it often becomes art. Our co-creative relationship with culture is particularly apparent in its intersection with technology, often referred to as cyber culture. Lister and his co-authors describe it like this. Culture has become inextricably bound up with complex technological systems and environments. The term cyber culture stands for something like this. Not a culture that is separate from technology, but one in which the, sp the spheres fuse. Co-creation with smart machines has arisen to prominence in recent years and inherits from earlier explorations of automated creative systems. Examples include improvised musical duets between musicians and machines, such as the performances by Sean Forum and the SIM system developed by Andrew Brown and colleagues. Creative interaction with artificial intelligence systems are act, uh, is an active field of research and development, with systems such as Shadow Play by John Lalee and colleagues that both extrapolates and suggests drawn shapes alongside human real drawing activities. Co-creation need not be a solitary interaction with non-humans. It can also include other people. In collaborative creative activities with humans, nature or machines, we want to make sure that, that the others we're working with have complementary capabilities to the ones that we have. This first requires us to reflect on our own skills and abilities. Like all collaborative activities, co-creation can influence an understanding of our personal creative skills, and perhaps those of humanity more broadly. Finally, when some of the tools required for co-creation exist, but many do not, don't be surprised if you have to build some new tools that are going to help us to be co-creative. As many of the examples shown here attest, achievements in these interactions require creative technologists to develop bespoke tools that lead to novel and interesting outcomes. In summary, this is what we've looked at in this presentation. Co-creative practices explicitly embrace the influence of culture, technology and nature. Interactions with co-creative systems affect our perception and understanding of creative agency and creative expression. Creative partnerships with digital systems enable us to take advantage of emerging technologies and generative processes. <laughs>